This is a lesson on friction and forces due to friction. We're going to concentrate on something called sliding friction, which is the friction that occurs when two surfaces are sliding across each other. Uh, that's to distinguish it from something like rolling friction, which is a different subject. Okay, so uh, with sliding friction, we actually have two different types of friction. And to do that, let's imagine that uh, we have a heavy filing cabinet, and we're trying to push this heavy filing cabinet across the floor. Okay. Now, uh, if you know, if you've ever tried to push something heavy across the floor, that if you push on it just a little bit with a small force, uh, then it doesn't go anywhere. And according to Newton's second law, that means that it's if it's still not going anywhere, if it's not accelerating, then the net force on it is equal to zero. Well, if you're pushing on it to the right, but the net force on it is equal to zero, then that means there must be something that's pushing on it to the left. And that something is friction. So we'll label the friction force as uh, big F sub little f. Okay. And uh, if you push on the filing cabinet to the right, then friction will push back to the left. It will push back uh, parallel to the surface of contact between the floor and the filing cabinet because it's actually friction between the floor and the filing cabinet that is keeping the filing cabinet from moving. Uh, so we're going to define friction then as uh, a force uh, that is parallel to the surface of contact. And in addition to being parallel to the surface of contact, uh, its direction will be opposed to uh, motion. So since you're trying to move the filing cabinet to the right, friction will push to the left because that's opposed to the motion that you're trying to create by pushing to the right. A, and the direction is parallel to the surface of contact. In this case, the surface of contact is the floor. So the friction is parallel to that surface of contact. OK, now you know, of course, also if you've tried to move something heavy, that if you push hard enough, then eventually the filing cabinet will start to move in the direction that you're pushing. Uh, and in fact, when you uh, when you start moving it, it gets a little bit easier uh, to keep it going than it was to start pushing it in the first place. Uh, and that's because there are two different kinds of friction involved. Before you move the filing cabinet, we have what we call static friction. Okay, that's the friction that keeps it from moving in the first place. And then after it starts sliding, we have what is called kinetic friction. And that's the friction that works against the motion after it's already moving. Uh, so qualitatively, we've described friction. There are two different kinds of it, static and kinetic. Both kinds are always going to oppose motion. And both kinds are always parallel to the surface of contact. So how about quantitatively? How, you know, if we want to use numbers to describe friction, uh, how are we going to do that? Well, both static and kinetic friction are proportional to the normal force on an object due to the surface of contact. 
And if you want to change that proportional to to equal to, then we need a constant of proportionality. And that constant of proportionality we are going to call mu. It's the it's a lowercase Greek letter mu. Uh, and if you want to specify whether you're talking about static friction or kinetic friction, you can use a little subscript. Static friction we'll call mu sub s and kinetic friction we'll call mu sub k. Okay, and coefficients of friction uh, vary between zero if there is no friction and one if there is a maximum amount of friction. Uh, and coefficients of friction have no units. If I divide both sides of this equation by the normal force, then you'll see that the force of friction divided by the normal force is equal to the coefficient of friction. Okay, so since friction and normal force both have units of newtons, then the newtons in that equation cancel and see that uh, mu, the coefficient of friction, is a dimensionless number without any units. And uh, in general, the coefficient of friction depends on it uh, depends very specifically on the nature of the two surfaces. So the coefficient of friction for a filing cabinet and the floor would be different than the coefficient of friction for a box and the floor. And that would be different than the coefficient of friction between your shoe and the floor and so on. Uh, so that usually you have to be you have to know the coefficient of friction for your specific situation. It's not something that you can do a Google search on and say, what's the coefficient of friction for a filing cabinet on a floor? Then uh, Google, well, if Google knew the answer to that, it would actually it would have to say, well, it depends which floor, which filing cabinet, uh, and so on. So it's something that generally you have to be given. Uh, okay, well let's uh, let's work a problem. I'm going to clear a part of the board here so that we can uh, work a numerical example having to do with friction. Uh, and let's just stick with moving the filing cabinet across the floor. Okay, let's say uh, if this filing cabinet uh, weighs 50 kilograms, which means, oh, something around 120 pounds or so, uh, then, and let's say that the coefficient of static friction between the filing cabinet and the floor is equal to 0 0.2, then let's find the force of the push required to move the filing cabinet. Okay, so what we will do is uh, you read the problem and you draw a picture, which we have already done. Once you do that, you need to draw a free body diagram. So let's draw a free body diagram of the filing cabinet. Here's my filing cabinet. I have the force of the push. I have the force of friction in the opposite direction. I have gravity pulling down. And I have the normal force pushing up. Once you have drawn your free body diagram, you need to pick a coordinate system. So we'll pick x to be horizontal and y to be vertical. And then we need to resolve all of the forces in our free body diagram into their x and y components. Well, uh, that's easy for this problem because the force of the push and friction both have only an x component. And the normal force and gravity both have only a y component. So 
uh, that part's already done for us. We're ready to apply Newton's second law in both the x and the y directions. The sum of the forces in the x direction equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. And the sum of the forces in the y direction equals mass times acceleration in the y direction. OK, uh, next we take all of the forces that are in the x direction and we put them on the left side of this equation here. We have the force of the push in the positive x direction. And we have the force of friction in the negative x direction. That is equal to the mass of filing cabinet, which is 50 kilograms, times the acceleration of the filing cabinet in the x direction. OK, so what, what uh, should we plug in for the acceleration of the filing cabinet in the x direction? Uh, at first, you might think, well, we need there to be an acceleration, because after all, I want to start the filing cabinet moving. And if it goes from not moving to moving, then that's kind of, by definition, an acceleration. Uh, and you would be right if that's what you think. But um, it turns out that the number that we plug in for the acceleration there can be zero. Uh, and if that seems a little weird, uh, well, and I agree, it does seem a little weird. So why can we plug in zero here for the acceleration? Well, remember, I just want the smallest possible force I need to get that filing cabinet moving. So I'm going to pick a really little acceleration. Let's see, 0.01 meters per second squared. But then somebody will come along and say, well, you know, 0.01 meters per second squared, that's a small acceleration, but it's not the smallest possible acceleration. How about 0.001 meters per second squared? Or how about 0.0000001 meters per second squared? And you see, any acceleration we pick, even a tiny one that's got 100 zeros in front of a 1, would be a big enough acceleration. So we might as well just put 0 there, because we could get as close to 0 as we want, and it still work. So well, whether or not you understand exactly why it's OK to put 0 in here, uh, if you don't understand that, you'll just have to take my word for it. But zero is the correct number to plug in for acceleration there. And in that case, it means that we have Fp equals the force of friction. In other words, the push that we need in order to get this filing cabinet moving is exactly the force of the push that will cancel out the force of friction. Makes sense. Now, we'd like to have a number, though. Uh, so uh, we need to keep going. What we'll do next is we'll use the fact that the force of friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction, because the filing cabinet isn't moving yet, times the normal force. Well. That tells me that the force of the push is equal to the coefficient of static friction, which is given in the problem as 0 0.2 times the normal force. All right, well, we're temporarily stuck because I don't know the normal force. But the normal force is pointing in the y direction up here. Okay, so uh, let's try using this equation, Newton's second law. Uh, for the y direction to see if we can find the normal force. So what we're going to do is take all the forces that are in the y direction and put them on the left side of this equation. So I've got the normal force in the positive y direction, and I have gravity in the negative. So we have the normal force minus gravity equals the mass times the acceleration. But the acceleration in the y direction is 0, because my filing cabinet is not going to start levitating or sinking. Um, 
So I have the normal force equals the force of gravity. And the force of gravity is equal to the mass of the filing cabinet times G, right, which is 50 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared or 490 newtons. So let's plug that into here, which gives me that the force of push that I need to get this filing cabinet moving is 0 0.2 times 490 newtons or uh, that turns out to be 98 newtons. And that's the answer, 98 newtons.